better. Can we do the bolt? Like the fearless fires? Yeah. Or like we need stand. <laughs> Hey everyone, thanks so much for tuning in and for all of the people supporting this series. Tonight's a little different from the last three weeks because I'm actually taking a piece that I wrote for a Thorpe Effects demo last year in collaboration with my friend Alex Alfordish, and we're adapting it to this new set of pedals and players. The last three songs in the series have been aggressive and heavy and written just a few days before the sessions, but I knew I wanted something more vibey on the album as well. Tonight, we finally have a full crew again. Ben Livingston is actually playing a Rhodes this evening and is taking a break from drum kit duty. Tim Marshawn is returning on secondary and lead guitar. Michael Cole is making his bass guitar debut. And Alex Alfordish came into the studio to play drums for us tonight. Ben, in that section, you think maybe like a C3, like on... Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the roots. I for, just need it. For this one, too? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I just want Yeah, yeah, I'm going to hit the roots there. I just got to get it. We're probably going to need that on the board somewhere, like what these sections are. So, or we could I just go by section one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Because there's not a lot of room on there. Yeah. Do, do we have any different color marker of any color? Well, we just found that we had this one. Okay, cool. That'll so, work. That'll work. That'll work. So, if you want to do like um, A, B, C, okay. something like that. And I wish good. we had sticky notes because you could just. Yeah. This is just intro. It's going to be its own little yeah. thing. So I don't need to waste a letter on it because it never comes back. So, hey, yeah. something Donald. Oh, shoot. Oh, I don't know. Chris, see if you can wipe this over there and have it like not fall. Yes. What numbers? You did a great job. It just a simple task. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All the twos and like everything, yeah. it's like, I wish there was a simpler way to do that. This still helps very much. Way different. So thank yeah. you for doing that. Yeah, a little late, but. Oh, it's all good. Yeah. All right, cool. Let's raise this up higher. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> Tracking. We need to decide a tempo so Max can get that in. I think, the, I think it most depends on that. That's what's going to groove. Like if that's right. too fast or too slow, I feel like. That's, right, that's right. Cool. So we need to pick out two tempos. Alex originally programmed the beat for me on an OP1 synth in that Torpy demo, but he's also a talented drummer himself, and I invited him to come physically to play the beat for this session. Not on the bell, just the whole one. I got it, I got it. We can add like shaker later. Okay, so the hi hat does work. We set out to capture the original vibe of the shorter demo track we made with OP1 drum sampling, trying to get a similar drum sound and feel. I also wrote in some new parts and I expanded the whole piece and concept before I came in. Alex, you know what it needs in that right in the beginning? It needs some kind of like. Splitting up the pedals was a lot easier this session because we actually had enough players to go around this time. The Stone Def PDF 1X has become a regular on our baseboards, but I also threw Michael Alexander circuitry cafeteria fuzz for the heavier spots in the song and the Randy's Revenge ring modulator to create some interesting textures at key moments. The Empress bass compressor has definitely become essential as well. Is this, is that, was that the verse? Yeah, we're going into the verse. Okay, so yeah, just start me uh, right the verse. Michael and I are very similar as musicians in a lot of ways, I think. 
Besides the fact that we often have very different tastes in music we personally listen to regularly, we both kind of have this compulsion to be a perfectionist when it comes to arrangement and execution and recording. Kind of an every note counts just as much as the ones that aren't there mentality that I think all good producers have to learn to develop over time. You got that section though, right? Yep. Okay. So we can punch it in from right when I start. Let me do it that one section one more time. Okay. Michael said he wants to do, do that same thing one more time. Tim asked me a while back if he could do some kind of ripping fuzz solo at some point, so I happily obliged and stuck the Milkman Pop Top Boost, the EAE Limelight Drive, and the Mask Audio Cascader Fuzz on his board this time, along with the Pledask Electric Drum Reverb for the weirder, dreamier sections. this and then and then have you separately separately all right yeah. let's do, the do this first. infinite reverb thing so just tell them to go ahead and hit record and we'll okay we're gonna knock out the intro first. can you flick me right, the count about yeah. 45 minutes just so you okay know. okay Okay, stop. I'm sorry. You want to just come in for a moment? I thought I got, I think I got off somehow. Um, could you just play back for me from right after the intro? I just need to hear something real quick, sorry. Tim, as usual, comes in with this air of professionality and easygoing attitude that is always refreshing to have in a rush studio session. He always does a great job of just feeling out what sections of the song need filling in, and I saved a whole section of the song for him to take the lead on this time as well. We've been waiting for a good opportunity to bust out Ben's Rhodes piano, and this was definitely the track for it. We lined up the Farm Pedals Fumes Phaser, the Eventide Black Hole, and the Polar Bear Petrichor. Although I ended up swapping the petrichor later to be used on Tim's fuzz solo. So is that why you had the speaker set up? Yeah. So now I'm in my headphones. Ben is so incredibly gifted as a musician. Besides having the hardest role in the band from the ground up being the drummer for most of the series, he is also an incredible composer, arranger, producer himself and it's always a pleasure hearing him play on piano or keys as well. Rhodes pianos are pretty much sex to the ears, so I have a feeling it'll be returning later in the series too. I need to uh, do that again. <gasps> Dude! Yeah, yeah. I, 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 uh, he survived. survived. Yeah, he survived. <laughs> Max, can you play a random section of the track? <laughs> you want less track? Yeah, less track. I can't hear you, Max, but uh, I love you and I appreciate you. <laughs> if you're new to the series, I've been limiting myself to five primary pedals in each song, both as a way to challenge myself with limitations, but also to help with option paralysis. I chose the Dr. Scientist Frass Dazzler as my primary dirt pedal because of its vast range of gain stages and tones. The Wonder Fuzzhausen for its ripping Velcro sound I knew I could use in the heavier sections. The Tomcat Super Daydreamer as my main delay verb. The ob &E Sunlight for the ambient parts and cool textural stuff. And finally the Spaceman Delta II Tremolo so I could add movement to anything I wanted. You won't hear me tracking in these studio sessions because A, it helps save some of our five hour studio window that we have, but also because I can take more time to film myself tracking my parts for later clips on my Instagram page where you can really hear what the pedals are doing more in depth. 
It also gives me time to just flesh out my parts since I'm really just bringing song outlines into these sessions. After a long night working out parts and tracking as much as possible, we again are faced with the task of trying to perform it all cohesively as a band to a click track. Is that better? Can we I do can... the vault, like the Fearless Flyers? <laughs> yeah, uh, or are we like... We need stand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait, we all have to have sunglasses. It's not always pretty, but thankfully later I can take this all into my DAW and touch stuff up if I need to. What you're hearing at the end of these sessions are not the final mixes by any stretch that are going to be on the record that we're making. These are just rough mixes that are whipped together really quickly um, to get out in time for these episodes. So anyway, I uh, hope you guys dig it. Hey guys, Cohen here. It's been a long week, we've been working really hard, and I'm ready to give out some prizes. So without further ado, let's dig into it. This Mask Audio Cascader Fuzz is gonna make its way to. The Xander Circuitry Cafeteer Fuzz is gonna find its way to. The yet to be released Farm Petals Fumes Phaser is gonna find its way. Too. Congratulations, you're going to get the Eventide Black Hole Reverb. 
Milkman Pop Tom Boost is going to. And lastly, of course, the grand prize is going to. Let's see what you got. Of course, you've got the Chox DC7 Power Supply, the Old Blood Noises Sunlight Reverb, the Wonder Effects Now Discontinued Fuzzhausen Fuzz, the Spaceman Delta 2 Tremolo, the Doctor Scientist Frazz Dazzler, and the Tomcat Pedals Super Daydreamer Delay and Reverb. Plus, you're getting a Pedal Train Novo 24 board, a high quality handmade Revelation Cable Instrument Cable, a set of the fantastic Disaster Area Designs Evo solderless patch cables, and of course, a $75 Circles Drum Samples gift card. I think that is a pretty freaking cool stash. I hope you are as excited as I am excited for you. Thank you so much everyone for tuning in and for your support since we started the series. Uh, we've got eight more episodes left to go and I really hope to ramp things up. I hope you're enjoying all the breakdown clips and all the experimentation that we've been doing over here. And we're just really excited to be given the opportunity to do something so cool like this. So thanks so much again and I hope everyone has a, a great morning, evening, afternoon, wherever it is in your part of the world. I hope to see you again on episode five. Take care.